my name is Lori Steelink. Um, I'm Akno Oatum from the Gila River Indian community. My mother was um, raised um, in uh, District 4 uh, there, but I was adopted. She gave me up for adoption in 1960, and so I was raised in Tucson, Arizona, and I now reside in San Pedro, California, uh, which is uh, where the Port of Los Angeles is. And uh, I've been in the Los Angeles area since uh, 1995. The medium that I work in has changed over the years, but currently I would consider myself to be a multidisciplinary artist. I'm doing installation work these days, but I also make objects and the objects that I make, <clears throat> I make them so they can function um, as individual objects on their own. Um, but I also make them so they can be in conversation with the other objects that I make and then placing them in certain environments so that there's a conversation with that environment or that location, site-specific location that adds to another layer of the conversation. The piece that I made for the Desert Rider exhibition came about in a very funny way. Uh, it was comprised of elements that had been sitting around in my studio also things that I found on the street. I uh, tend to collect um, odds and ends for the purpose of including in my work. All those items are usually given a treatment in some way that personalizes them and speaks to um, whatever ideas that I have about that object itself. It's almost like empowering the object or giving the object a spirit the spirit already existed there, but it's more like um, pulling it out of the actual um, item. So there was a car hood that was gifted to me by a fellow worker and I hung on to it for about 10 years and, and moved with it, shifted it around in my studio. The hubcat came into existence because I found it on the street and it worked with the car hood. I had added yarn to that hubcap and I had actually put glittery stickers on top of it. And to me, it spoke of custom car culture that I experienced when I was a young teenager growing up in Tucson and going to what was then Randolph Park on Sundays where people would congregate with their low riders and their customized cars. And I always was very fascinated by that culture. Um, and so even in, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was fascinated by the amount of attention that was given to cars because there is a huge custom car culture and history, long time history here in Southern California. Um, so it's not only inspiration from the Southwest and my upbringing, but it's also inspiration from where I've been um, for the past, was well, since 1995. So um, with that, it as I hung that car, a uh, hubcap onto the car hood, it became a hood ornament in a sense. And it also made me remember back in the 1970s about that, those experiences that I had at Randolph Park and um, about my childhood. And I was always a great lover of horses when I was a child. I still love horses, but I was so intensely into them that they basically were my source of uh, connection to another realm in a way, another, it was another being, another, it's in a sense, a spiritual being to me because the amount of energy and the size and the beauty that it had. And Growing up in Tucson, Arizona, having been adopted, knowing that I was Native American, Akmel Atum, I at the time we were referred to as Pima by most peoples. And to me, that connection with the horse and the horses were on a level of uh, having this um, connection to my, my ancestry. As I said, the car hood I had for many years, the hubcap I recently found, and then I decked it out in a sense like anybody who had a, a car that was wanting to customize it and um, 
sort of give it a fancy quality or a treatment, that's where the yarn and the glitter stickers came in. And then when it hung on the car hood, it became this hood ornament. Then I found the pony emblem from the Mustang and attached it to the center of the hubcap. And at that moment, when I did all of those things, I recalled what it was like in my youth having been attracted to this culture of customizing cars to make them your own, to make, it, it was an individual statement about who you were. And for me, when I thought back about that period of my life growing up and being a teenager and having this really intense fondness and love for horses, I decided that this was in some ways uh, kind of a, a, not really a time machine, not really a magic carpet, but some sort of transportation device that would take me to either back or around or above uh, what it was when I was back there in the 1970s feeling very uncomfortable as a teenage girl who was growing up in a family that I was adopted into and also knowing that I came from uh, the Gila River Indian community, mm, the Pima people at the time, the Akmel Oatum, and wanting to have a connection to that without really being able to. And so was, there was a, a bit of an identity crisis that I had during that time. So it was, in some ways, my work um, for me is about healing, and it's about healing the trauma of my childhood of but it speaks on a general level to, I think, a lot of people. Um, and so I offer that as a, as a healing device. Um, I wrote about the piece, um, an artist statement uh, that, I, that actually accompanied the piece um, and I didn't necessarily intend for it, but that's just how it happened at the museum. And I'll read that statement now. The piece is called Pony, Pony. Pony is a memory, pony is an emblem, pony is an anthem, pony is a launch pad for a voyage. My child self believed my profound love for horses came from my ancestry. I didn't grow up with my culture or traditions, so that's what I held on to. I desired freedom at birth. I'd save my allowance so I could ride. I stole my parents' car when I was 14 years old. Well, I took it without their knowing. I was always rebellious, still am. I put metal to the pedal in their Chevy sedan and rode around. For a short while, that Chevy sedan was my pony. We got Mustangs, we got Broncos, we got Pintos. They're hot to trot and ready to roll. Come on down off the res and the ranch and pick out your pony today, says a car salesman shamelessly wearing a headdress and a commercial on TV in a scene from the 1989 road trip film, Pow Wow Highway, starring Gary Farm, Cayuga Nation and Wolf Clan. Farmer's character Filbert dreams of galloping wild ponies, but wakes up to a rusty beater that he will buy for a bag of weed to drive off backfiring and sputtering. Filbert names the car Protector, the war pony, and their gathering power as they go. Pony is a portal to the open road. That piece was sitting in my studio and I had put it together for a studio visit, uh, sort of like in a last minute, like, okay, what am I gonna do with this? This is sticking out here. And the person who came for the studio visit took a photograph of it. And I was thinking, oh, that's interesting. They're taking a photograph of it. It's not actually done. And then a week later, uh, Gilbert uh, came to the studio and he saw it and he immediately fell in love. <laughs> And he said, I'm doing a car show and I want to include this in my show. And I was at first a little apprehensive because I had just like put it together just like that. And so I said, let me think about it for a while. And I pondered it when I added these patterns, what I refer to as light rays, which are actually stencil paintings that extend from the top of the car hood. And from that point, there's soup can um, headlights to underneath the, the car hood so that it illuminated the, the light patterns. So my idea is that it sends into another realm, another dimension, um, the, the ride or the, the journey of, of Pony, of being on that, because that's what I imagined, whether it was imagination or real when I was riding horses, but when I wasn't, 
that's how I imagined myself as was a way to sort of escape whatever internal turmoil that I had um, to concentrate on being on a horse and being able to ride and go off anywhere um, and be completely free. So the hubcap that I found on, in the gutter on the street, I cleaned it off. And I had just made another piece previous to that where I took a, a floor fan, um, one that could rotate. I like this idea of, of the circle and, and movement. And I, so with the hubcap, I took that, cleaned it off. I added the yarn to each section of the hubcap, which there are five, and it was a Toyota hubcap. So I had a tripod and I attached that hubcap um, horizontally with a ball bearing in the center so that when you touched it, it would turn and the yarn fanned out like a hoop skirt, also like a fancy dancer. And so I was still working on that because the mechanism was a, a bit tricky to get, but I was thinking of it as uh, something that resembled, um, in my mind, a, a Tibetan prayer wheel, so that when spun, not only did you have this movement and it created this other um, uh, visual uh, because of the extension of the, of the yarn um, fanning out, that one could think of it as a, as a uh, sort of a delivery system of, of one's prayers or thoughts um, and, and put out there in a good way. That was my thinking. And so I refer to it as a, sp a spinning prayer wheel, but then uh, as time progressed and I got focused on other things in the studio and I had that studio visit and I just automatically took it and hung it on the car hood, it all sort of came to make more sense about this relationship to car culture. But yeah, that's, that's, I think that's, uh, describes how that piece came about was just sort of accidental, which is for me, how the best work comes about. Main theme for me in, in my piece and how it relates to the other works is that it's a very personal um, statement. And my identification, not necessarily with car culture, but with society in some way, it was um, and continues to be at times a very uncomfortable position to be in. I know some of the artists in the exhibition um, have a direct relationship because of familial connections with the with the car with car culture in the Southwest. I didn't have that, and I um, I appreciated it uh, when I was young, when I was in my teens. I didn't necessarily feel a disconnect, although I did notice the masculinity that it was steeped in, and that growing up in the 70s as a young teenager, grappling with that and with the inequality that existed, it was very present. And also I had a mother who was very outspoken about, who was, she was a feminism, but about equal rights. So I recognize that, but in a lot of cases, I think just because of who I was and where I came from, even from the family who gave me up for adoption, who I didn't know, there was a sense of, um, uh, uh, it's sort of like a punk aesthetic for me is that I, it was like a big kind of like, I don't care what you think. I'm just going to go ahead and do what I want to do. I want to have a, a, a certain amount of freedom to be able to express myself. So there was a certain kind of rebellion, but there was also this embracing of things that were unusual, which for me at the time was the car culture that existed. I think my piece fits in because there is this identification with um, wanting to belong in some way or another and embrace things that seem like they're at a, at a distance that maybe proves difficult to try to connect with. And I think overall, that could be maybe a general statement just about how I was feeling at the time when uh, and that I relate to 
in the piece, um, in the piece Pony. Uh, being from the Southwest, um, having grown up and spent a significant time in the desert and also being in nature, um, I can't help but being inspired by that. And as I said, I'm inspired by color culture. I'm inspired by a lot of things here in, in Southern California, but some of the work that I'm doing now, I would say actually most of the work I'm doing now, it has to do with memory and, you know, this idea of healing. And the memory is for me at this point in my life is about recalling those experiences and trying to heal from those, those moments that gave me a lot of pain and disconnection. I think that that memory, that, that idea of visiting those, those painful moments um, growing up. And even today, there are um, situations where I recognize how um, there's a disconnect with, 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 the, with, the, with nature. And so there's a loss of humanity. Um, and I feel that my work, that's my hope that I put into it is, is for, it is a gift for humanity and for um, celebration um, to ba basically kind of release some of that, um, those traumatic um, feelings and memories, but in a good way, um, in a celebratory way, um, in a way that will heal. Uh, me first as the artist, because I'm involved in it and hopefully it sparks um, some sort of uh, connection and recognizable feelings and, and uh, memories and other people that, that experience it. Like I said that, you know, that in, the, in the text that I wrote about Pony, it is an anthem. I mean, I look at it as being an anthem. Like I could imagine like um, a song of some kind, you know? And an anthem I'm not talking about the Star Spangled Banner, no way, but a personal anthem. Like you have all these singers who sing these heartfelt songs that a lot of people identify with and a lot of people listen to to get through moments of hurt and it makes them feel better. That's how I, I think of my work for myself. And I hope that it, it, it permeates throughout the wherever it may be in, in an installation. I don't think of myself as a healer, um, but I think that's part of what being an artist is in a way. And in a traditional sense, I'm, I don't think of myself as a healer in terms of my ancestry, but I do look at my work in a way that it is almost like a ceremonial process. It's, it is a ceremony. And so I just continue to do it. And, um, and be able to utilize uh, the, the, the things that stick out, kind of in a sense, uh, give them another life and an extension. So this is something that somebody, reporter from the Gila River Indian Community News just interviewed me and she wanted to know about my history. What I told her was uh, about the process that I went through after um, many years um, when I was finally somewhat focused as an adult to, and also the internet wasn't available at the time, there were no computers really, um, to find out who my birth mother was. And I had my birth records um, unsealed so that I could become a member of the Gila River Indian community, the Pima tribe or the Yakimalawatham tribe. Um, and I did that. And then through that process, I was able to register with the tribe and be counted. And to me, that was very important. To me, it was really important to be, to represent in a sense, um, my tribe and my ancestry and to honor that connection um, because it's always been present in my life. Um, and when I turned 40 and computers and the internets had you know, been in existence for a short while, um, I was able to find out who my birth mother was. And I ended up meeting her. And we at first started a correspondence um, by writing letters and cards back and forth. But I met her and I met all her relatives, which are now my relatives. And she has since departed. And I am in contact with my 
sisters and mostly my sisters. I have some brothers, but I was just um, visiting um, my sister Avelina after the opening of the Desert Rider exhibition. And what was interesting to me um, as we were driving around the reservation, she was showing me our family land and um, we went on a small highway and there was a big sign that said, watch for wild horses. And um, I remembered uh, all of a sudden that as a child, um, probably coming back from Los Angeles, visiting my father's parents to Tucson one summer and seeing wild horses off of the side of the tent and just like, like, oh, it was, it was like a religious experience. And when I saw that sign, it just brought all, like, all this like heavy, but really wonderful because I have this connection now. I did this piece, it all sort of locked into place. It all made sense, all those feelings and being reminded of that experience. And sure enough, we turned off onto the 10 and there was a, a herd of wild horses off to the side in the dust. It looked very dreamy. Um, I mean, those horses, uh, I feel for them a lot. It was like a, a very profound experience to see that and connect with that. And then to have that be on the land of our people and, and to have, I don't know, that in a sense it was maybe an epiphany of some kind is that I am deeply rooted to the land and I am deeply rooted to the community, even though I've been um, finding out and relating and connecting to it uh, uh, for now 20, 20 some years. So it was like coming home. And every time I go there, it's like coming home. It's like a magnet pulling me to that area. And I think it's also, of course, self-induced because I wanna find out more about my, my ancestry and my culture and my traditions. Um, and that is, that is also part of my work and that's part of the healing process for me.